Coming to you live from the JRE Tobacco Aladino Mobile Studios, it's the Cigar Pulpit. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another sermon from the Cigar Pulpit. I'm your Nick, and today we're going to answer a listener email. We're going to talk about Pulpit Fest, and uh, generally, I'm just going to kind of do that because uh, this is one of those ones where um, I'm coming at it uh, relatively, uh, relatively short-handed in terms of things to do, but that's all right, you know. I had a I had a wonderful weekend with my son, and I'll get into that in a little bit. But first. Let's get into what we're smoking. So, today, um, I am going to answer a listener email, and I want him to know that this was um, this was something that you know I didn't count on doing. But when he sent me this email, I got freaked out. So, listener Tom Coleman sent me an email and said, and and the 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 subject was just rebellious, and he says, "How's your stock?" I'm smoking one of mine, and I have half a box left. My palate could be off, but I'm getting a bitter. I'm getting bitter all of a sudden. Have you had one lately? These are four years old, and I just fear they're past their prime. So, I went into my humidor, and I got out my Henry Clay Warhawk Rebellious uh, box, and I opened up that box of Henry Clay Warhawk Rebellious, and I have one. And this is the first time that I have opened up that box, and this is the first cigar out of that box that has chilled in my humidor and rested and just sat there since I bought it in, um, I guess that was 2020. I guess that was 2020. Um, I remember at the time, I loved this cigar. I bought all total three boxes. One I went through. One I bought, but I bought it by the single at the shop, and you know I pretty much bought my way through it, but just as a single. And then I bought the last box they had in stock, um, and that's the one I've been sitting on. And so I opened up my supply, and so I have it here. I didn't even take it out of the cellophane because I, the the band, it looks a little brownish, little 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 little, little brownish there. And so I didn't know if that was the color of the band or if my cellophane had gotten, you know, kind of colored. And I wanted to I wanted to break it out here. So we're going to we're going to get it out of the cellophane here and, uh, you know, do do that. So for those of you who remember this, you know, I'm uh, getting it out of the cellophane there. All right. Oh, I'm looking at I wanted to look at the cellophane. You know, there's a little tinge of brown. Uh, I don't know how well you can see it on uh the youtubes here but uh there is a slight kind of coloration to the uh to the cellophane but uh this henry clay warhawk rebellious is a 6x54 toro um that is a nicaraguan puro that was made at the aj fernandez factory in esteli nicaragua and so um going off memory on this thing i remember it being a very um spicy cigar very peppery um had some wood components had some earth components but by and large the pepper was like the the predominant flavor so i'm curious if that's uh how it stays or um if it changes at all so anyway it's time to cut the cigar and the official cutting is brought to you by dan the man ponder over there at riverman cigar company of crestwood missouri and guys it's getting nice out in st louis here we've got you know, kind of that sporadic weather where, you know, one day it might be like 40 something, but the next day it might be, you know, 65 degrees or something like that. I think today, as I record this, um, I think it's going to be like over 60. And then tomorrow we're looking at like 66 or something like that. Rain on Thursday. So, I mean, it's one of those things where the weather is a little sporadic. But the beauty of that is Dan the Man Ponder over there at Riverman Cigar Company has that 1,500 square foot covered patio out front. And you can bring your lawn chair, and on a nice 65 degree day, you can sit out there with your coffee and have your cigar and just enjoy the nice um, early, 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 close to spring weather. And, uh, you know, on the rainy days, 
you can still sit out there and uh, be covered and and not wet, and that's nice. He also has the lounge inside if you know you're feeling uh, feeling like being inside. But you know, I, I it's it's post winter. I feel it's post winter. I don't know if on the calendar it technically is. But it, it, I feel like it's post-winter, and I'm just tired of being inside. I want to be able to sit out and have my cigar outside and enjoy the nice weather. So um, the covered patio at Riverman Cigar Company allows you to do that. And while you're there, there's all kinds of great cigars for you to try. So it's a win-win for everybody. If you're not in the St. Louis area, Dan does do mail order, so you can give him a call and place an order for all kinds of great cigars. Otherwise, that's Day in the Man Ponder, Riverman Cigar Company, Crestwood, Missouri. And now it's time for me to go ahead and cut my cigar. So I'm going to take off this fancy little footband here and uh, do this. I, uh, all right, we got that going. I'm looking forward to this. I used to, I, I loved this cigar when it came out. And it was a, it was a limited edition deal. You know, so uh, obviously, you know, you uh, you enjoy it while you can, and then you move on with life. Um, uh, you know, it's kind of like people sometimes. Um, but uh, anyway, um, we uh, we enjoy it while we can and move on. But then, in the case of this box, I was made able to. St- you know, sit on it for a while and see what it was like. So, cold draw time on the Henry Clay Warhawk Rebellious. Draw is very nice. Um, I you know, very light kind of cocoa-y component to it. Maybe a little earthiness as well. Um, I'm I'm pff, I'm looking forward to this guy. Like I said, it has been. A while since I fired one of these up. So I'm going to get this thing lit. And then we will get in and going on the program here. Um, this is a solo show, which means there are going to be gaps of time where I'm smoking. And uh, normally I would be worried about that. But this is way too good of a cigar for me to like just let just burn out. So, you know. Which means y'all just need to deal with the silence. Um. Ooh, man. That pepper hits me hard right off the foot here. Um. Oh, man, yeah. It's like in the throat. Now, granted, um, I have not... I'm also coming at this with a relatively fresh palate. Um, I have not smoked since... Thursday. Um, I'm recording this on Tuesday. Uh, for those of you in the future who are listening to this, this episode came out a little late on Tuesday. It was not available right in the morning on Tuesday because I had a really fun weekend with my son, which I'll get to in a minute. And uh, I just didn't have time. And so, you know, um, normally uh, deadlines are, I live by deadlines. Deadlines are very, very important to me. And um, anyway, but uh, this uh this um, weekend was a really fun weekend, and uh, when it comes to whether or not I'm going to worry about uh, banging out a podcast or spending time with my seven going on eight-year-old son, um, yeah, he wins out every time. It's just uh, it's just what it is. So um, anyway, so I have not smoked since Thursday, so I'm coming at this not having had a cigar for what four days now um so yes the pepper is very predominant on the palate and let's do a retro hail <coughs> holy shit um yeah no that uh that oh my god that uh built up a lot Oh, man, I've been getting better with the retro hails lately, but son of a bitch, that one just slipped my throat right here live on the show. Um, oh, my God. Uh, yeah, I think, <laughs> I think I just saw angels there. Um, anyway, uh, dude, Tom, so far, 
I don't know, man. It might just be your palate because so far this cigar is smoking wonderfully for me. Um, but anyway, so this weekend, like I said, I had my son. Um, you know, I, I look, you all know I'm divorced. You all know, you know, when it comes into a divorce situation, there's there's, you know, um, visitation and that sort of thing. And so, you know, I have my son when I have my son. Um, uh, oftentimes, uh, I, ha- I, I have him Friday to Sunday. Um, and so then for the purposes of Tuesday shows, I have all day Monday to get a show banged out and, uh, you know, put up and sent your way. However, this weekend, uh, with president's day on, uh, on Monday, I, uh, he was off school. And so I was, uh, able and fortunate enough to spend another day with him. So I got, I got, uh, you know, Friday through Monday and, um, you know, I, I, I wanted to do something nice. I wanted to do something special, uh, something different. Um, he's a very active kid, loves going outside, playing outside. We go to the park a lot, you know, this and that and whatever. He loves running around, lots of energy. I mean, fuck, man, if I could figure out a way to condense and bottle and sell that energy of a seven-year-old kid, um, you know, you I, I'd be a billionaire. Um, but because uh, even just like, five percent of it would make my productivity for the day just like exponentially increase but um anyway i uh i i i rented a hotel room uh locally a little staycation for what it's worth um and uh i did so because the kid loves to swim loves swimming loves swimming loves playing in the water he's been taking swimming lessons since he turned one you know the kid's a little fish and so um, I knew that some time in the pool would be a good thing for him. And so we got a hotel room and we pretty much did nothing but swim. Um, we got there, checked into the hotel within 20 minutes of checking in, we were changed and down at the pool and it was a really nice, um, heated indoor saltwater pool. It was very nice. And so we, uh, We just swam for hours, Um, quite a few hours, actually. Uh, I I wore that kid out that first night, and uh, he crashed hard. And then the next morning was uh, the day we were checking out, so Monday. We were checking out on Monday. And, um, you know, we came down, we had breakfast, and I could tell, you know, where we were sitting at the breakfast table uh, the pool area was right behind us, and he just kind of kept glancing over at the pool area, just kind of glancing over at it. Um, never said anything, you know. So we get back up to the room after breakfast, and he go- pops into the bathroom for a minute and comes out. And when he comes out, he's wearing a swimsuit. And I'm like, oh, are you wanting to go swim again? And he's like, yeah. So we uh, we went back down to the pool again, and we spent another um uh, two hours ish, you know, uh, down at the pool that morning before we had to check out, uh, for the day. And, uh, I, you know, it, it, it a hundred percent worth it. It was not a very expensive, uh, proposition to do, um, a yeah, hundred and a quarter. Um, but, uh, it, it was a hundred percent worth it. So, um, so with that said, uh, that's why this episode, um, for those of you in the present who care, um, that's why this episode posted a little late today. So, um, sorry, not sorry. So, anyway, the other thing I wanted to touch on today. God, this thing is smoking wonderfully. It's it's puffing out. For those of you on the YouTube, you see it. For those of you on the audio, you don't. But it is puffing out a ton of of smoke i mean it has become a little smokestack um it uh it's just the draw on it has just it's just wonderful and so far the smoking experience has been great burn line a slight little bit there i had a little bit of wrapper that wasn't quite catching but i had to hit it with just a little bit more fire now and now it's doing wonderfully so um i don't know i have no complaints at all about my Henry Clay Warhawk Rebellious. So, in terms of uh, the other news, I said I wanted to discuss Pulpit Fest. Now, I know, previously on this show, 
not too terribly long ago, meh, in the last couple months, I may have put a flag in the ground and said that uh, September, there was a weekend in September that we were going to have Pulpit Fest here in St. Louis. And uh, if you recall, just prior to TPE, I had an episode with my dad and with Ken Clarich, and we discussed Pulpit Fest, and they made a very solid case as to not doing it that weekend. Um, and uh, I later found out they felt bad. They felt like they were like putting me on the spot, but it, it, I, I had already been thinking about it because there's a lot going on in September. You know, um, I would actually very much enjoy going to the New England Cigar Festival again. I enjoyed the two guys anniversary dinner that I did in 2022. I would very much enjoy going to the, uh, the new England cigar festival because I think that it would be a lot of fun. Um, but that isn't, that is literally the weekend after the weekend I chose for pulpit fest. Additionally, the Drew estate Kentucky barn smoker is the first weekend of October, which is two weeks after the date that I picked for pulpit fest and one week after the date of the new England cigar festival. So like, there's like a lot in a very short period of time. Some people had expressed their interest in going to the Kentucky barn smoker. I didn't think that I would get people to come to both pulpit fest and the barn smoker, you know, if they were in the same geographic area, um, two weeks apart, you know, it's like, what are you, which one are you going to do? Um, and so I, I, I questioned it and, and so I got to thinking, I'm like, you know, I need to, I, I was already leaning towards changing the dates. And so I have, uh, I've spoken with, I, I had a really great conversation with Ken at TPE and we talked about, uh, pulpit fest and Ken threw out a very interesting proposition. Ken uh, said, you know, what if you had Pulpit Fest at my place? And at first I was like, I mean, it's it's Pulpit Fest. It's in St. Louis. It's been in St. Louis all the prior years, you know. But then I got to thinking about it. That's requiring everybody to come to me. And it's requiring everybody to come and travel to my neck of the woods. And yeah, it's centrally located in the middle of the country, but you know, where are my listeners based and that sort of thing. And Florida, it's a, one of my top states for listeners. You know, there's a lot of you parishioners in Florida. Um, and even if you're not in Florida, who doesn't want to go to Florida? Who doesn't want an excuse to go down and go to the beach and that sort of thing. And Ken's place is super close to the beach. You can drive the A1A. It's a wonderful drive. It's gorgeous, especially at night. You drive that and you got the ocean off the one side, maybe, you know, whatever. I mean, if you drive it in the morning, if you're a morning person, my God, you have the sunrise coming up over the ocean. It's wonderful. Um, it's close enough to Cape Canaveral that if they're launching a space rocket or some shit, you can actually see the, the launch from Ken, Ken's place. Um, you know, you're 30 minutes south of St. Augustine, 30 minutes north of, uh, Daytona. And it's just, a, it's a, it's a great little place for people to come and vacation if they're not from Florida. So I got to thinking about it and I think about it and thinking about it and by God, we made it happen. So this is the final 2024 announcement for pulpit fest. This is, this is happening. Put it in your books. This is the way it's going to go. Book it. August 23rd through the 25th at Ashen Ale in Palm Coast, Florida will be Pulpit Fest 2024. And uh, Ken has a wonderful place, wonderful selection of cigars, great outdoor space, um, not just at his place, but then in the courtyard of that, of that uh, you know, European village he's based in. Um you know, if you are looking for Airbnbs, you might even be able to get an Airbnb in this European village to where you wouldn't even have to go anywhere. There's restaurants, there's bars, there's Ken's place. It's all literally in one spot. So, you know, if you if you were looking to do to do that for for um, rental space. But yes, bottom line, Pulpit Fest 2024 will be in Palm Coast, Florida at the Ash and Ale Lounge. And uh, it will be August 23rd through the 25th. So mark your calendar. 
Make it happen. It's going to be a fun time. And for all of you Florida listeners that maybe I don't interact with a whole lot, like in person, this is a great opportunity to come and party with everybody. And I have it on very, very good um, authority that Jerry Pulaski himself has secured transportation from uh, the Great White North uh, down to Florida for this. So um, my first big special guest announcement, because I anticipate there to be some, because that's the other thing is doing this in Florida. We're not far from Miami. We're not far from where these cigar guys are at. So you don't know who may be showing up to this weekend. And, uh, yeah, it might be a really good weekend for the, you, you cigar lovers to pop by the Ash and Ale Lounge. Because, uh, like I said, you never know who's going to show up. But one person that I will go ahead and say will probably, eh, I'm not going to say probably. I mean, unless, uh, unless life takes a really fucked up hard turn for him, which it is Jerry Pulaski, so it could very well happen. I think we may see Jerry Pulaski at Pulpit Fest 2024. So, you know. There you go, right there. Celebrity appearances. Boom, Jerry Blasky. Um, he can live in the dumpster out back at Ken's place for the weekend. You know, that can be his Airbnb. Um, yeah, so though, that's that's what's going on. Um, I know it's a bit of a shift. Hopefully. Mm-hmm. Loving the cigar. Hopefully, those of you who have uh, come to enjoy Pulpit Fest annually... Uh, we'll still be able to make it. I know um, there's a few people that drive um, annually. I know like Teddy and Luke, I know you guys typically drive. Um, I'm really hoping you guys can make it. I, you know, um, it's just, it, you know, it, it's one of those things. But, but here's the other, like half of this announcement is, so by shifting this from, by shifting this from St. Louis this year, the thought is making Pulpit Fest an annual traveling event. So this year, I'm looking at the Ash and Ale Lounge in uh, Palm Coast, Florida. 2025, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to publicly ask right now. I'm going to ask right now. Uh, I haven't spoken to him about this. He doesn't even know I'm thinking about it. But I'm just going to put it out there right now. And uh, if he's listening, he can reach out to me. And if he's not listening, well, somebody can reach out to him to tell him that I said this so that then he can reach out to me. Uh, but Al Roman, Good Cigar. How would the Good Cigar Lounge like to host Pulpit Fest 2025? I think that would be a fun thing. And uh, I've been meaning to get down to your place. And uh, maybe maybe this is an opportunity for me to get down to your place and bring a whole crew of my friends with me. So I'm just saying, we start making this a traveling event. Go Florida this year, maybe Texas next year. Who knows? Sky's the limit. We got a whole country. We got a whole bunch of parishioners that we can we can go and visit. Let's make this a traveling event and uh, take it on the road in, every year. And so... Um, that's what I'm looking at. So guys, um, let me know your thoughts. I, I would love to have a really big crew cause I truly think before it's all said and done, we are going to have a stellar, stellar event in Palm coast this year. I think, uh, I think you're going to see a lot more, um, manufacturers, celebrity, you know, cigar people, quote unquote, cigar celebrities, as Mr. Jonathan likes to say, popping by. And um, I think it's going to be a really good time. So I hope to see everybody in Palm Coast, Florida, August 23rd through the 25th. Um, I'm doing everything I can to keep this thing going because I do not want to have to relight it. But it is still smoking wonderfully. And the... Uh, <coughs> Holy shit. Uh, the first third retro hail. Oh, it's still a freaking knife to the throat. Oh, my God. Um, yeah. All right. Well, enough about that. So why don't we now go ahead and do this? 
It's time for the Villiger Cigars Entertainment Report. Brought to you by Villiger. Villiger Cigars, one of the leading cigar and cigarello manufacturers in the world, founded in 1888 and still family owned and operated. Head over to VilligerCigars.com and check the store locator to find a shop near you that carries them. We guarantee that Villiger Cigars will be a wonderful addition to your humidor and cigar rotation. My God, that retro hill is just hanging in the nostrils and just stinging. I love it. Um, like, the strength on this. I remember this cigar being strong. Maybe I'm not remembering it as clearly, but like, holy crap, the strength on this thing is just out of this world. Um, I remember it being uh, spicy, but this is this is next level. So I'm really digging it. Um, anyway, Villiger Cigars Entertainment Report. So uh, I didn't do much TV watching at all this weekend. Um, I was... Uh, I had a very active weekend with, uh, with my son. And so we, uh, we didn't really do a whole lot of TV watching at all. Um, I will say I have still continued watching, uh, the Americans, um, on Hulu that, uh, being a, uh, I think I talked about it on here, the, the show about the, the Russian spies, um, you know, coming in. And, uh, you know, that kind of thing. But, uh, and, and living in America during the 1980s. Um, super, I, I've enjoyed it. It's been a decent show. Um, podcast wise, I've, I, I've found an episode. I don't listen to it on the regular because, um, I just don't. Um, there's some shows that, like, every once in a while an episode comes along and you're like, okay, that's, that's interesting. Uh, but there's an episode of the show Smartless, and Smartless, that's the show that's got Jason Bateman, Sean Hayes, and Will Arnett, and they basically um, interview another celebrity about their career and that sort of thing, And because uh, they've all got friends in the industry and shit like that. Um, but they did one recently with Sam Rockwell, and so I've been listening to that, and... Uh, I love Sam Rockwell. I don't know if you guys, I don't know how familiar you guys are. Uh, some of you might be like, oh, yeah, I know exactly who Sam Rockwell is. But for those of you who don't, um, he's been in a bunch of shit. And I'm sure you probably know him. Um, it's just a matter of picking which role you know him from. Uh, he was in, um, he played Justin Hammer, the the smarmy kind of business dude in Iron Man Two. Um, he was the uh, like goofy commander guy in Jojo Rabbit. Um, he was the detective in See How They Run. Um, he was oh god, what else has he been? He's been in so much shit. And like I said, I know you know who he is. Um, but uh, anyway, I love the 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 guy. He's got this kind of like, uh, und like detached kind of coolness to him, and I, I, I very much enjoy this his acting. And so, um, I've been I've been listening to that, and it's been fun, and it's been interesting. So you know, we got that going on. Um, I have uh, downloaded some episodes of uh, The Raven. That's the uh, podcast all about the uh the murder that um everybody uh suspects that uh ray lewis committed haven't listened to any of them yet but it's queued up and ready so you know um i'll be getting to that here soon as well and uh otherwise um it's kind of it now, like i said light villager entertainment report for today uh, mostly because uh, my kid and i we kind of stayed away from the tv this weekend we kind of Tried to find other things to do um, so that we weren't staring at a screen. I'm not a big, I, I'm not a big guy for screen time um, for kids. I think that, uh, I think it's fucking our kids up. To be honest, I think it's making them antisocial. I think it's making them uh, uh, dependent on it. I think it's uh, stifling imagination and creativity. Um, I'm not a fan of screen time for kids. So uh, on the weekends that my kid is over, uh, the most screen time he gets is uh, the TV. And 
I pay attention to that too because if he's just sitting and staring at the TV the whole time watching something, um, we find something else to do. But if he's got it on and he's coloring or he's playing with puzzles or you know he's playing with something else or he's doing he's doing something else and that just is on in the background as like background noise and maybe every once in a while he'll stop what he's doing and he glances up and watches it for a minute and then he like goes back to what he's doing i don't mind that you know cuz i do that i mean i'll have the tv on while i'm working on my newspaper or something like that and you know i'll take a mental break from work to look up at the tv and be like oh okay cool and i go back to what i'm doing but if I find myself just staring at the TV mindlessly, then I have to turn the TV off because then I'm distracted from what I'm doing. I don't want him to just like zone in. I want him to like, you know, being engaged in what he's actively doing with maybe that as a background. So, um, yeah, we don't really do screen time here. And, uh, I, I, so, so I really, I don't, I don't remember how I even got to this. Whatever. The bottom line is we didn't watch any real TV this weekend. Um, smidge. Smidge of Thomas. Uh, the Tank Engine. That's about it. Um, yeah. So, got that going on. So now, uh, why don't we go ahead uh, and pivot away from the Villiger Cigars Entertainment Report and hear uh, a fun fact from Pinky. Hey, it's your girl Pinky. Ready for a fun fact? Rats are taking over the world. Two rat parents could have as many as 15,000 descendants in just one year. This has been Pinky, and I'll be back next time with more fun facts. And it just dawned on me that I did a fun fact uh, on Friday, and I was going to start doing three cigars we smoked and enjoyed this week on Tuesday and fun facts on Friday, but um, I set it up to now do a fun fact again on Tuesday. So, um You'll get three cigars we smoked and enjoyed this week on Friday, but that's okay because it's just me here, and, uh, well, I didn't really smoke much um, since the last time I did that segment because that was on a Tuesday show, and so I smoked Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but I didn't smoke all weekend long, so I really didn't accumulate an awful lot of stuff um, to pick from for that segment. So, anyway, I guess it worked out. Um, so rats, rats will, you know, we say that you'll multiply by rat, like rabbits. Maybe it should be like rats. I don't know. Um, I guess that's how we ended up with the plague for a while. There it was the rats and, you know, the, the carrying and the, the bites and that sort of, eh, whatever. Anyway. Um, all right. Well, I am, uh. I'm continuing my Henry Clay Warhog Rebellious here, starting to get near the second third. And um, this thing is a slow smoker. Um, I'm enjoying the hell out of it, and I do not want to uh, uh, rush this in any way, shape, or form. So um, the odds of me completing this during this show are uh, slim to none. Um, actually very, very slim to none, unless something weird happens, like somebody calls me and I suddenly get a guest and this thing takes off. Um, I don't believe that's going to happen. You're so you're probably getting a short episode today, but, um, that's okay. I'll, I'll get some stuff scheduled and, you know, we'll have somebody on for Friday with me so that I have somebody to talk to and, uh, we'll go from there. Um, this one is kind of a little bit, a little bit of housekeeping, a little bit, a little bit of housekeeping. So, um, and quite frankly, it's a busy day for me because like I said, you know, I am recording this on Tuesday. Tuesday is normally my newspaper production day. So this is the day that I would be sitting out, uh, laying out all the pages of my newspaper for the week, getting that ready and, uh, doing that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's busy. It's, it's a busy day. Um, you know, I got stuff going on. Thankfully though, uh, assuming that, uh, the weatherman is correct. I might be able to sit out on my patio and do that today. Um, cause like I said, I think it's supposed to get over 60 today. So, and it's sunny as hell. So I'm hoping that maybe I can get some outside time, but that'd be nice. Anyway, uh, why don't we now go ahead and hear about our friends over at my monthly cigars. This would normally be the time that I give some information about my monthly cigars, but I've hired that out this week, so take it away. 
My Monthly Cigars is a premium cigar subscription service. It comes in a variety of different size boxes at affordable prices. Use offer code PULPIT and get free shipping on your first box and 20% off any items in the online store at MyMonthlyCigars.com. That's offer code PULPIT. Thanks. While you're over there at MyMonthlyCigars.com, you can check out the fucking good coffee. Um, don't be a fucker. Get the fucking good coffee. Uh, I, uh, have a, a nice travel mug full of it here with, um, with my little add-ins. Um, no, I don't drink black. Um, I could, but I don't. But you can get the Daily Press, which is the official, uh, coffee of the Scar Pulpit. You can get the Lounge Blend, all kinds of other great flavors over there at uh, MyMonthlyCigars.com and FockingGoodCoffee.com if you just want to go straight for the coffee. Um, anyway, you can do that. But uh, but you want some cigars with the coffee, so why, why fool yourself? Just, just you know, go to the one site. It'll be fine. Um, in terms of the socials, I'm available on Instagram at The Cigar Pulpit. I'm on Facebook where we have the Cigar Pulpit Parishioners Group. Um, we have Twitter slash X where I don't really do a whole lot, um, but I will. I, I, I keep saying that, and uh, one of these days I'll find the time. Uh, YouTube, where you can watch this, and uh, um, yeah, I have all kinds of things in mind and, and plotted out. It, it really does truly come down to a matter of time, um, the newsletter being one of them. I know I said I would get that out uh, before the end of January, and well, pff, here we are at the mid to back half of February, and I still haven't, but, uh, you know, um, I've been working on getting the, the template designed and all that kind of stuff, and it's, it's just, it's one more thing, there's always one more thing, um, I, I, I need, I need a life assistant, I've determined that, um, I think, I think, I think we all would do well, maybe some people have very simple lives to where it wouldn't matter if they had somebody, but, um, I think I've determined that I need a life assistant, um, somebody that uh, can help me out with uh, with pulpit stuff. Somebody can help me out with newspaper stuff in general life stuff. I mean, you know, it's amazing all the like random bullshit that's in your life. Like, oh, I got to run to the bank and do a deposit. Oh, I got to go to the grocery store. I'm out of coffee creamer. I'm out of milk. I'm out of this. I'm out of that. You know, it's like little life stuff. I, I feel like we all should have that. Um, but, uh, unfortunately they, they, they want to get paid and by God, I just, I, I don't have any money. Who has any money? I mean, um, I don't know how it is for all the rest of you. Gas shot up exponentially here, uh, recently. Um, it's now 369 a gallon in my area, which is bullshit. Um, I cross the river and I can get it for 299 a gallon in Missouri. So we're talking a literal like 70 cent difference um, in two states. So that's kind of crazy. Um, I'm fortunate enough that I'm only half an hour from the river. So I can go and do that for those people who live in like central Illinois and uh, they're stuck. I mean, they're just stuck. And, you know, it, it, life's just too damn expensive these days. Um, my landlord is uh, prepping to put my... Uh, my duplex on the market to sell it. Um, not super thrilled about that. I've got a, uh, a realtor who's coming over to take pictures of my place tomorrow. Really not super thrilled about that. Um, I do not want my living space on display on the internet. Um, so I'm going to be scrambling tonight and tomorrow morning before I go to leave to do my deliveries to... Um, put personal items and stuff away so that they don't show up in fucking pictures on a Century 21 site. So that's awesome. Um, you know, it's just, it's just one more thing, you know? It's always just one more thing. Oh, and for those of you who are asking, why don't you just buy the duplex and, you know, rent out the other side and make money off that and blah, 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 and all that, you know, there's so much work that needs to be done to this place that um i you know the price he's asking for it is outrageous and um 
I would have to jack the rent on that other half so much in order to to even not even break even. I mean, I'm still going to be paying something, you know. So it's just it's not it's not a good financial investment. Um, but uh, you know, such is life. So at some point, hell, I might be moving in 2024, which I hate moving. I absolutely positively hate moving. I did it a lot when I was young, you know, college time frame and everything, years a few years post college. I did it quite a bit and uh I hate it. Um the older I've gotten, the more I hate it. Uh moving furniture is a giant pain in the ass and hiring two men in a truck is an even bigger pain in the ass. So um so I got that going for me, so I don't know. I'm not complaining. I, I sound like I'm I, I, I'm kind of complaining, but uh, anyway, I'm, uh, it's what it is. I'm trying to give you guys a window into my life right now, um, but such as it is what it is, you know? I mean, I got up today, so I got that going for me, so um, no aches and pains that are obvious, so I got that going for me. Um, and uh, uh, I've been uh, working the last two weeks to try and lose a little weight. Um, I don't know how much it's working. Uh, I weigh in uh, tomorrow uh, for the first time in two weeks. So we'll see, um, you know, if it's working. And, uh, you know, we'll kind of go from there. We'll, we'll see what's what. But, uh, I, you know, I feel maybe a little better, a little, little slightly thinner. Um, Never know. This 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 seems a little less, you know. But uh, those of you on the YouTube now know what I'm talking about. But yeah, so I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, uh, rather than stretch this out any further, I was trying to get to the point where um, Tom, in his email, said uh, said that his cigar was getting bitter. Uh, I thought he said a specific point, but now that I'm looking at the email again, he says that uh, it's getting bitter all of a sudden. So I don't know if he means just the entirety of the cigar or uh, at a specific point in the cigar. But, um, uh, you know, I just, uh, I, I'll i say as of right now, um, not quite to the halfway point of the, of the Henry Clay Warhawk Rebellious. Tom, I think you had a bad one, buddy. This one is smoking awesome. I am so happy that you emailed me with this concern because it gave me a good excuse to go ahead and crack open that box and have one of these. Um, I'm I'm now worried that now that the seal has been broken on it, that I'm going to be breaking into it more frequently and going through these because um, I, I don't want... That's the whole thing. I didn't... I don't want them to ever go. I, I, I love them, and I want to continue to smoke them, but I don't want them to go. And so um, that I'm, it's going to be a weird balance between that sort of thing. But I don't know. I get the whole, like, cigars are meant to be smoked, so go ahead and smoke it, you know. And that, and, and, and a good cigar turns an occasion into a, uh, a memorable occasion, but... At the same time, man, like, I don't just want to burn through stuff just because. I mean, like, I, you know, sometimes a cigar is just a special cigar. And, uh, you know, this is one of the first ones in, you know, this was, this was 2020. I started smoking mid-2018. So I'd been smoking for, eh, give or take, about two years by the time this hit. And this is one of the first ones that when it came out, I smoked it and I was like, holy shit, like this one, this, this is a definitive favorite. I mean, I'd had some favorites prior to that. I had some go-tos, you know, prior to that. Um, but like this one just kind of came out and, and it hit me, it hit me just right. And I, I really enjoyed it. And so I would hate for it to, for me to burn through them and be done with it because they haven't done another round of the Henry Clay Warhawk Rebellious. You know, they came out with the Warhawk. Um, I don't remember when that was. Might have been 2019. Um, and then in 2020 is when they came out with this limited edition. 
They made twenty four thousand. Uh, hang on, I know this actually. I looked this up beforehand. Um, hang on, where is it? Where is it? I know I have this information. I'm sorry, this is riveting. Um, they made twelve hundred boxes of twenty cigars, so twenty four thousand cigars total. Um, and I'm responsible for smoking through, uh, two and I just smart started my third. So, um, so three of those 1200 boxes went to me. Um, and it was a very affordable cigar, you know, looking back at the information on this, the MSRP cigar on this cigar, it was uh, $9 and 60 cents. So a box of 20 was like 192 bucks. Uh, release date was July of 2020. Um, you know, it, it, it just. It was affordable. It was a, a good amount of cigars that you got in the box. Uh, it had great, or it has, you know, great flavor, construction. It's just, it's just, it was such a good cigar. And I wish that um, uh, the fine folks over at, um, who does this? Is this Altidus? I mean, it's Henry Clay. So, I th yeah, it's Altidus. I wish the fine folks over at Altidus and uh, AJ Fernandez would have continued this collaboration. Um, maybe done like an annual release with the Rebellious or something like that. I think that, that would have been um, a good uh, good home run for them. Um, or maybe it wasn't. Maybe that's why they didn't do another uh, release. Maybe this was a dud. And I'm one of the few people who really liked it other than Tom. So, I don't know. What do I know? But, anyway, guys... Um, yeah, final thoughts as I'm smoking this. Tom, I think you had a dud. It is still smoking wonderfully. If you happen to find any Henry Clay Warhawk Rebellious in uh, your humidors as you're you know, out and about exploring in shops and that sort of thing, and you find a dusty box from four years ago that's sitting in a corner with like four or five sticks left in it that people have just kind of left and forgotten about, do yourself a favor and grab one. Uh, they... The, it, it's smoking wonderfully. If you like a full-bodied, you know, um, uh, uh, kind of spicy cigar, you know, it, 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 it's there, man. It's a meaty, meaty stick. It's not, look, it's not going to slit your throat like, uh, oh, um, it's maybe not as full-bodied as like some LFDs and that sort of thing. I mean, to be honest, it's smoking kind of like a medium right now in terms of strength. Um, it's the it's that peppery spice. It's that AJ Fernandez peppery spice that gives it that extra oomph. So maybe maybe full bodied maybe isn't the extra. Maybe it's a medium plus. But uh, but it's a great cigar. And if you find it out and about, pick one up. Give it a try. Anyway, guys, uh, I appreciate your patience. Letting me get this out a little late. And um, you know we will be back at it on Friday with uh, more fun shenanigans. But anyway, guys, this has been. Another sermon from the Cigar Pulpit. I'm Nick. Stay safe. Stay smoky. And don't forget, August 23rd and 25th in Palm Coast, Florida. Pulpit Fest.